Bible lesson for this morning in the Psalm. Psalm 129. Psalm 129. It's a psalm of absence. Uh, we're going through the, all these psalms of absence. There are 15 small psalms in the Bible. And people would sing those psalms, would memorize those psalms, and sing when they were going to Jerusalem for the, the festival. So every Three times a year, uh, the men were, uh, they had to go, but then they start taking the family there. And then it was a good a caravan, a big one, and going to Jerusalem, no matter where they be, they would travel there, and they would sing as they go. So each song had a lesson in this journey to God, the journey to the temple, the journey to have a fellowship and relationship with God. So this is uh, one of those Psalms, 129. It says this, They have greatly oppressed me from my youth. Let this prayer say, They have greatly oppressed me from my youth, but they have not gained the victory over me. Plow men have plowed my back and made their furrows long. But the Lord is righteous. He has cut me free from the court of the wicked. May all who hate Zion be turned back to shame. May they be like grass of the root, which withered before it can grow. With the river cannot fill his hands, nor the one who gathers to his heart. May those who pass by not say, Blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, help us to understand your word this morning. Help us to learn from the experience of the people that followed you way before us. Help us to learn. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. I don't need to tell you that those people that would drive all the way to Jerusalem, they would face enemies. People that do not like their God, or people that do not like God at all. People that do not like their faith, but people that do not like their behavior. What they do in their, in their religion, and pray, and helping people and others, they would face all those enemies. And, and we once in a while, or eventually, we will face our enemies, and enemies, people that do not like what we believe, what we believe, do not like our God, do not like the way that we behave, the way that we follow the scriptures, and they do not like, and, there's, and sometimes we don't know how to face those enemies. So one option is just have a message to share with you some good ideas what you should do when you have to face your enemy. And I have right here with me. You just wear one of those and pretend that uh, they will not see you. <laughs> they will not see you. You're kind of a uh, secret thing, and you know, you kind of put this thing there, and uh, they, they will ignore you, and you do not have to face your enemy. But sometimes this is not a map. It's not enough, it's not, it's not good, because the enemies will know that we're there. So there's another option here that I, I brought here for you, to show you that, yeah, this is kind of, you don't want to face them, you just put one of them, and, and they will not know that you were there. They will not know. They're going to say, okay, yeah, we don't like that God, we don't like that church, we don't like that people, the way that we hate, talk about God, and just stand there, uh, look interested, look interested, nod sometimes, but not, and, and they will not even think that you're there. But this is true. This is not discreet enough. We need something that kind of make us invisible, very discreet, so they do not notice that we are there, they are talking about us and about our God. So, a very discreet thing here. There we go. Look at that. No one will notice that you were there. Totally discreet, right? They're going to look at you and say, yeah, I don't know, I don't like the, 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 the God of those kind of people. 
think, oh, we don't like the, what they think, what they believe, how they behave, all that kind of thing. But yes, you're going to be very discreet. Um, they do not notice that you are around. Um, they are talking about you. And sometimes that is the challenge that we face. We don't want to, we don't want to face our enemies. And we know that we have them. We know that we have them. Do not fool yourself. You have them. There are people out there that do not like our love. Do not like our faith. And do not like the way that we live our lives. And they are going to do anything that they can to destroy us, to destroy us. And this song here helps us to understand that it's great because it's the kind of thousands and thousands of years before now. And they had the same kind of problem. And they had beautiful lessons for us about our attitude toward this enemy that are right in front of our face. So the first thing that we learn with them is resisting their attack, and they're going to attack. They're going to attack. And let me share with you what the psalmist tells us about the attack that they are going to suffer. First one says, they have greatly oppressed me from my youth. Well, let me try to say, they have greatly, many, many attacks. It's not just one here, one there. It's many. Are many attacks. They're greatly. Second, they're public. The attacks are public. Let me try to say it. You know it. The, 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 the psalmist said, look, tell it. Tell your story. You have a story to tell of those attacks. There are many on their public, they're doing, they're, they're doing our face, they're doing to everybody to see that they do not agree with us, they don't like us, they don't like our God. And they're doing that for a long time. The song says, since they knew, since they knew, they're doing that. And some of you here, you're seeing that for a long time. They're attacking, they're attacking God. So, this is the first thing that we learn about the attacks. But then we need to learn that the, the, the psalmist teaches the model of the of the attack. How they do that. How they do the attack. What, what those attacks do, do in our lives. The first thing is oppression. They have greatly oppressed me. Greatly oppressed me. And an oppression here is a political action. And we need to understand that because we are living a time like that. It's a political oppression. And we're going to face that. Our brothers and sisters in the Middle East, they're facing that right now. Our brothers and sisters in Africa, they're facing that right now. Our brothers and sisters in North Korea, they're facing that right now. Our brothers and sisters in China, they're facing that right now. Our brothers and sisters in Pakistan, they're facing that right now. Our brothers and sisters in India, they're facing that right now. Oppression. You are the minority among the majority, and they do whatever they want, they don't like you. Or you are the majority living in a place where the minority rules. There than that. So oppression. The second thing that they do, energy drainage. Plow my head, plow my back, and make their corals long. Plow our back, drain our energy to make us bleed until we do not have more energy. They're doing, they're coming, they keep coming, they keep coming. And one thing here, one thing there, and when we're fighting this, and then that something pops out there, and you're getting drained to the point that says, okay, I had it, I'm not going to do it, I'm out. This is what's going on, so. That is the plan to drain our energy. We keep fighting all those fights. Until we don't have more energy. And the third way 
cooperation of those that have this good tidings, the courts. But the Lord is right to be as cut me free from the courts of the wicked. Or immobilization. Immobilization. They will immobilize the church. They will try to stop you of sharing Jesus. Talking about God. Talking about our faith. Living our life the way that we believe that we should live. They're going to try to stop it. They did that in the past. They're still doing that around the world. It's work. It's working for them. So this is how they operate. And then the psalmist tells them about the resistance. How are we going to resist that? There's two things that we need to do. The first one is the internal one. And it's great because the psalmist said, the verse said, they did not gain the victory over me. That is the first attitude. They try everything, but you know what? I'm still here. I'm still standing. I'm still here. They try to stop me. They try to drain my energy. They try to oppress me. But you know what? I'm still here. I'm still standing. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give in. I believe in God. I believe in the truth. I believe in Jesus as a Savior. I believe. That's the internal thing. Your heart. Be strong. You say, I, I'm going to hang in there. It's going to be tough. But I'm going to hang in there. And I, I'm grateful for those that are here throughout the years. There's a testimony to say, yes, a lot of struggle, a lot of opposition, energy drainage, and all that kind of thing, oppress everything, but you know what? You're still here. You're still here. Hanging in there. And the external resistance in the verse 4 is from the Lord. The Lord, the Lord is righteous. He has cut me free. It is the Lord that will help us. It is the Lord that will give us the strength. It is the Lord that will cut us loose. It is the Lord that will help us when the situation gets ugly and when our, our enemies come and we have to face them. It is the Lord that needs to cut us free and say, hey, go. Money. They're going to lose money. 
They were going to pay financially for all what they had done against God. And then the spiritual life, the people the spiritual life, may those who pass by are not saved. The blessing of the Lord is to be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Don't say that to them. It's interesting to Don't say that to them. Now I was puzzled with that because Jesus said that we should pray for our, our enemies and we should bless them. Yes. If they need something and I can help in their lives, I will do it. I don't like them, I don't have to like them. I don't agree with them, I don't have to agree with them. If there is a need, and I am the next one, I'm not the closest one of them, I am the one responsible to do something to help them. So I have to bless them in that sense. But what the song is saying here is that don't bless them. If they have a plan to destroy you, don't say God bless you. If they have an intention to put you down, don't say God bless you. I'm not going to bless you. I'm not going to ask God to bless you to do wrong. To bless you to do injustice. To bless you to go against me, against the church, against God. I'm not going to ask God to bless you. And then we see those so we're going to face our enemies, and they're going to try. They're going to try to stop us. And they're trying. They're trying to stop the church. It's a worldwide movement. We're seeing that in Latin America. We're seeing that in Africa, in Asia, here in America. And we are right in the middle. And we need to face our enemies. And we're going to stand up and say, I'm here. I'm here. And God needs to help us. And He will help us and cut the cords that are kind of trying to stop us to do what we're supposed to do. And we will not do it. We will pray for God to defeat them to all ends of their lives. So they were facing this a long time ago. They had to walk to those cities and places. And it was hard. They had to risk their lives in some areas. We're, we're not there yet. There are brothers and sisters who have placed in Today, they are being crucified. Exterminated. Everybody. They're facing their enemies. We should have been spread for them. That is our hands to have spread. Father, we know that we have enemies. You have enemies. People that do not agree with you, do not like you, do not like your Lord, do not like your church. Help us, O Lord. Help us to stand tall. Help us to stand. Help us to hang in your name. Help us to resist. Strengthen our faith in the Lord in those times. Help us to help each other. Bless us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.